This right here is what we call the single greatest moment in Mushoku Tensei so far. Things change, turning points come, chaos happens, and there's so many great moments to pick from. But Norn Supremacy, accomplishing what Rudy failed at, and Rudy just feels so happy he doesn't have to feel like his big bro having to leave that room knowing she's never going to come out like he did. And there's always going to be people who will be like, Rudy had it worse, this, that. The fact that Rudy can come out of this situation and just be so proud, the fact that he can be like, if Nanahoshi ever gets home, I want her to deliver my bro a message. Because he knows he messed up, he knows he failed. And the fact that just to have such beautiful buildup, and I'm so happy in this episode, Norn literally says what I think most Mashuku Tensei fans already know, but there are those people who, are, who still, even up to last week, were like, I don't get why Norn dislikes Rudy. And she's coming out here saying, hey, the first thing I see of this guy who I don't know beats up this loving dad I have. What the hell? The next time I see him, after being ripped from my home, is I see him stumbling home drunkenly with yet again another woman as dad's out there desperately searching for mom. What a scumbag. And then you add in the insecurity because you're perfectly average and everyone around you, your siblings, are so much better and she can't escape, like, your Rudy sister. She's not even her own person in this school and when people realize who she is, she's below average for this school. And it's like... The insecurities and that resentment makes total sense. And having her internalize those thoughts, giving her the camera, making her the main character in that moment, she is fantastic. And that reunion scene was everything because it was a long time coming. Many episodes of buildup. And Norn, if I'm being told that the author loves Norn as a character, that Norn would be the MC if Rudy didn't exist, you know, you got a lot to live up to, and goddamn, did this episode do it. This is a peak Isekai episode. Last week proved why Mashuka Tente be the king of Isekai, but it's carrying on even stronger into this episode. Full live reactions over on my Patreon if you want to see my full uncut thoughts to all these amazing episodes. It's going to be over there if you're interested. So, where do you even begin? The writing is next level. You know, there's certain episodes of Isekai that constantly will get referenced. Rem and Subaru's Conversation from ReZero, fantastic episode, one of my personal favorites. And I think this right here is currently the standout episode of Mishiku Tensei. Because rather than it just being like, oh, it's really nice that he was able to help his sister and do what he couldn't do back in his first life. It's the parallels. The fact that when Rudy first tries to enter her room, we hear a voice. I didn't recognize the voice at all. I was like, God damn, did she summon a demon in there? What's going on? And it's the voice of when he would tell people to go away. And throughout the episode, you see this reflection of how his big bro, the fact that it starts off normal kind of lit scene and by the end, it's basically sunset. That bro probably spent eight hours there trying to convince his brother to, hey, this shit's horrible. You don't have to go to school right now. Let's just go get a bite to eat. You know, just trying to say, like, you can't stay holed up in your room. And I'm so happy that prior to this flashback, Rudy says that people who hold themselves up in the room don't actually want to stay there forever, no matter what they say. It's a coping tactic. To stay locked up in a single space forever is unhealthy and unnatural. It's, it's depression, and he recognizes that. And to see that brother just, the fact that after that moment, he never tried again. And it's understandable. You know, people might want to say, well, it's wrong of him, he should have kept trying, but it's like, you can only talk to a wall for so long, and people have to want to help themselves. It's like addiction, right? You can try and try, but at the end of the day, it's their choice if they want to get help, and no amount of love from your family can change that. And the fact that Rudy just feels so much guilt, and he's like, I think this is my favorite line that he spoke in this episode, it's when he's first approaching the bed, and he's like, I realize, it's something along the lines of like, I realize what my brother felt in that, and he basically is saying that I feel like my brother and how he did that day. And you can just tell how guilty he feels because now knowing what his brother went through, it's a completely different experience. It was already a hard scene for him, but now being in his shoes, it's almost like another Isekai truck just slammed into him. And the flip around when you see Norm, when she opens that and sees Paul, this is such a beautiful and touching scene because she is so depressed. She has a sister who she half gets along with half dozen but is considered way more smart and talented than her she has a brother that apparently everyone worships and her experience is that he drunkenly goes around his life not caring about mom and punches dad why does everyone worship this guy and why am i being ripped away from my loving dad to go stay here and the fact that she even brings up something i didn't consider 
She's actually scared of being tossed away. So she's scared of him because if she pisses him off, where does she go? This is her only spot, so she has to walk this thin line. And the fact that, of course, we know Rudy's not going to do anything like punch her or like he did to Paul and stuff. It's just that entire concept because an adult who sees someone punch their loved ones is going to have a very bad first impression on anyone. Imagine being like six years old or whatever and seeing the love of your life, your your Papa Dearest who protected you and literally was the perfect dad to her. Even if he wasn't the perfect dad to Rudy, he was the perfect dad for her. It's like there's so much and the fact that she sees his fists behind the like the silk curtain or whatever, the fact that it goes from that to her saying, I know he won't hit me. It's just, it's not Rudy saying something to convince her otherwise. It's her being a person thinking about things and saying, you know, I've really been trying because Rudyard, Paul, they all tell me these things, but it's hard for, for me to let go. But in this moment, he seems so genuine that I have to believe it. And it's just such a touching scene. Rudy reflecting and seeing himself in that room and what his brother went through and her seeing Paul and the kindness and love that he gives is what makes the writing in Mishuga Tensei so freaking fantastic. Mishuga Tensei haters... Like, it's different to not like the show, and then there's the haters. And I think we can tell the difference. If you like something more than they do, they get irrationally upset. Like, to a weird degree. But this writing, if this was the first season of Mushugo Tensei and they dropped this, it would still be a good moment, but it wouldn't be, like, as impactful. Especially given that Rudy was literally trying to end his life earlier into this season. There has been so many ups and downs, and to see Rudy at his most respectful is fantastic. We know in Mishuka Tensei, turning points are a thing. Bad things will still happen. Bad things are going to happen. It's gonna, it's gonna make it all the more painful. But the thing about life, whether you have these explosive turning points like in a Mishuka Tensei, or life just can be a biatch, at the end of the day, you have to still enjoy the good while you have it. I think that's the core message of a show like this. And... Well, it's good that Rudy's uh, initial, I'm gonna go kill a fool who hurt my sister, he had good intentions, but this is the difference of parents who try to stick up for their kids and don't. Because when the parents try to stick up for the kids, it 99% of the time will make it worse. And I was so happy it didn't implode, because if there actually was bullying going on in that class, goddamn, he actually would have had to kill someone to, to make it work, and I don't think that would have kept them in that school, but it was the thought that counts, but yeah, he, he definitely had a long way to go in terms of, uh, you know, parental guidance there, but thank god the rest of it went a lot more smoothly, and I think more on the nose of what it should be, but 10 out of 10, best Mushuga Tensei episode, one of the greatest Isekai episodes in my opinion. Like, I think that's in a top 10 for me in terms of like, wow, that is just so... When you think of what you want to see from an isekai, Season 2, Episode 17 of Mushuku Tensei is that for me. Of course, those are my feelings. Let me know what you thought, because I thought this Norn Focus episode was freaking fantastic. The wholesomeness of how happy she is now is just... Ugh, hit me right in the feels. She could easily be a main character in this show, and I love that. But let me know what you're feeling down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring the bell so you can know if I went up a little more. And like I mentioned, we got those full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. Uh, so today, we got Logan Frank, Yori, Luke Knights, Lizzie MT, Zach, August, and Master Creator. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.